internationally recognized for teaching and preaching the uncompromised Word of God, Bishop Clarence E. McClendon answers the prophetic and apostolic call upon his life by ministering the healing grace and miracle anointing of Jesus Christ around the world. By his preaching and teaching the uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ, Bishop McClendon the teacher, the preacher, the apostle, and an anointed prophet sent to the nations, being used by the power of the Holy Spirit, has led to the healing and deliverance of millions around the world during his healing crusades and conferences. If you want to experience another level of worship, witness the healing power of Jesus, learn the uncompromised Word of God, confirmed by notable miracles, then we invite you to partake in the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit by the moving of God's transforming grace. Prepare to receive today's word with a recap from the prophet's recent messages. Verse number nine. For I am the least of the apostles. Paul is writing now. Who am not worthy to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church of God. Don't miss this now. Don't miss. Don't. I, he said I am the least of the apostles. Who am not worthy to be called an apostle. Now, God, do I really have to say that? I mean, I am reading and I am hearing and I'm getting... But, but, because our audience is, is, is much... Of, uh, for I am the least of the apostles. Who am not worthy to be called about. There are whole denominations and fellowships of churches who preach... And teach that there are no apostles or prophets alive today. There are no apostles other than the original 12. But Paul says here that he was seen by the 12. Then he says he was seen by all the apostles. And then he says last he was seen by me. And he says I, I, I'm an apostle. He says I'm the least of the apostles. But he says he is one. And he never saw Jesus Christ in the flesh. He was not a follower of Jesus during his earthly ministry. So all you people who continue to say there are no apostles or prophets except for the original 12, you must exclude Paul also. And if Paul is an apostle, then it is evidence that God is still making apostles out of men and women to whom he appears who never saw Jesus in the flesh. Settle, don't write me anymore. And don't let anybody trick you because they have a Bible and a pinky ring into thinking that there are no apostles and prophets today. I don't want you to, get, I don't want you to miss what the apostle is saying in the beauty and eloquence of the writing. I don't want you to miss the import of what he's saying. Here he is articulating the essence of the effect of the gospel and the grace of God on the human heart and on the human life. Paul is asserting that he is not worthy in his own self. Watch this now. He is not worthy in his own self to be called what Jesus has called him. No, you missed it. I'm going somewhere with this. He just said, I am not worthy in my natural person to be called what Jesus has called me. Jesus called me an apostle. Hear it. I know I'm not worthy to be called an apostle because I personally.
persecuted the church. But. Somebody say but. But. Even though I myself. Am disqualified. From calling myself. What he called me. I'm going to call myself. What he called me. Because he called me it. Oh, did you get it? I I'm going to say it about myself. Because he said it about me. Even though I know who I am. I trust that he knows who I am. More than I know who I am. So I'm going to say. What he said about me. Grab your neighbor's hand. Grab your neighbor's hand. Say, I'm going to say what he said about me. Say, that's how this grace works. So, so, see, this is why he says, the, his grace to me was not in vain. I heard what he said. So I'm going to say what he said. Grab your neighbor's hand and say, this is how this grace thing works. I say what God said about me. I say who he says I am, even though I know in my natural flesh I'm not qualified to be what he says. I still am what he says I am. So check me out. I'm righteous. I'm holy. I'm healed. I'm prospered. I'm blessed. I'm a son of God. Woo! Look at somebody say, I'm highly favored. I'm an overcomer. I am more than a conqueror. Don't miss that. I'm not a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. See, you see, we say that. We don't, we don't, we don't let it compute. The conqueror is the one who fights and wins. More than a conqueror is the one who gets the spoils of the one who fought and won. I'm not fighting. He fought. I get the victory. Lay your hands on yourself and shout grace. So Paul asserts he is not worthy to be called what Jesus made him because of what he did before he met the Lord. Don't let anything you've done. Keep you from calling yourself. Don't let anything you've done. Keep yourself. From calling yourself. What he has called you. I tell people all the time. See this is why we've got it. This is why we've got it. We've got it. We got to stop taking on the language and the nomenclature of the world because they're trying to do the best they can with what they have. But we have more than them. No believer in Christ Jesus is an ex anything. You can't be an ex anything when you have no past. If any man be in Christ, The words literally mean presented for the first time. If any man be in Christ, he is presenting himself to you for the first time. So you actually don't know me. Even if you knew me. The day before I was born from above, you don't know me. Now, and the problem is most Christians don't know themselves. Because the only way you can know yourself as a new creation is to look into the, into the mirror. And the scripture calls the perfect law of liberty the mirror for the new creation. 
Which means the only way I can see myself is by looking into the Word and seeing who I am. This is what, this is what, 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 the, what the apostle means when he says, he that looks into the perfect law of liberty, the Word of God, is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Just like in the physical realm, you behold your physical person in a mirror and no matter what you think you look like, that's what you look like. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. You, you, no matter what you think you look like, <laughs> when you look at that mirror, that's what you look like. <laughs> the same is true in the spirit. When you look into the word of God, no matter what you think, you are. That's what you look like. You new creation, you. You are healed. You are whole. You are holy. You are righteous. You are unreprovable in the sight of God. I decided to trust the mirror. Instead of my feelings or people's opinions. Watch, for by the grace of God I am what I am, and, uh, and his grace toward me was not in vain, but I, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Now watch this. Yet not I, but the grace which was with me. I want you to get what this man of God just said, because it is extraordinarily powerful and it is exactly what is up on your life right now Hallelujah. it's exactly what the Holy Spirit is doing right now with whoever will receive it Hallelujah. and I say this to you as, as, as a prophet of God it, 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 he said this he said I am by the grace of God and the grace of God, his grace to me was not in vain. He said, I, I labored more abundantly than them all. Yet, it wasn't me. It was the grace. It was, it was the grace of God that did the work. No, 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 you missed it. Paul says the grace labored. Just drill down, Doc, drill down. Paul said, watch this, when I started agreeing with the grace of God that was given to me, the grace started working. The, the grace started doing stuff that I couldn't do. The grace started manifesting things that I couldn't manifest. The grace started accomplishing things. He says, the grace of God that was given to me caused me to outwork the apostles that actually walked with Jesus. Y'all aren't hearing me. The three and a half years while he was on the earth, the grace that was given to me caused me to outwork them. To outproduce them. To outmanifest them. Y'all aren't hearing me. It, 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 this is why two-thirds of your New Testament are not written by Peter or James or Philip or Andrew or Bartholomew. They are written by Paul. Why? This grace that he received and activated 
by calling himself what God called him and agreeing with what God showed him started working. And the Spirit of God told me to tell the church this grace that we have been preaching and teaching about is not just an undeserved favor. It is that. But it's more than that. It is an empowerment. It is the impartation of a supernatural ability. An ability, I got to get this as God said. An ability to do more. I'm going to say it the way God says. He, says. he said, I want you to tell my people that my grace is not only to be relieving them from a performance, from a performance based religion. It is and releasing us to the glorious liberty of the sons of God. But he said, tell them that this grace is also to be an empowering, meaning an enabling with super natural ability and abilities to stay with me he said and qualify supernatural he said when I say supernatural I'm not just talking about church supernatural I'm not just talking about healing the sick opening blind eyes raising the dead that's a part of it he said but I'm talking about supernatural to do the natural better, more consistently, and beyond the norm. The supernatural to be a better businessman than someone who went to the Wharton School of Business. The supernatural, you're not listening to me. The supernatural to be able to write a book. Better than someone who got a degree in English literature. You're not listening to me. The supernatural ability to outproduce the world in what they think belongs to them. That y'all not listening. The supernatural to out Microsoft, Microsoft. The supernatural to out Apple, Apple. Y'all aren't hearing me, see? You got to get your vision bigger. The, the supernatural. To out agent the agents. To out produce the producers. See, you are looking at me like I'm preaching from another world. I am the one you're supposed to be living in. You new creation, you. Watch it. Paul just told you. I was not there when Jesus did all the stuff he did and said all the stuff he said. To the apostles, the twelve that were walking with him. And the Bible says that when they were alone with him, when the twelve were alone with him, the Bible says he explained, Jesus explained everything to them. Paul said, I wasn't there for any of that. Woo! But I got this grace. Ah! And I got this grace by revelation of the Spirit of God. And that thing started working. Are you getting this? I am telling you that whatever you do, you're about to do it better than anybody else can do it. You're about to get ideas that nobody else had in your discipline, in your area. You are going to rise to the top.
It is ordained for you in this hour. You have been sentenced to succeed. But if you if you're next to yeah. If you uh if you're next to somebody you trust, lay your hands on them and just shout better, 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 better. You're gonna do it better. You're gonna do it better than anybody else. You're gonna be at the top of the game. Woo! You're gonna rise to the top and they're gonna see the light of God on you. Talking to you. The Academy of Healing and Wellness Convention returns with fresh revelation about the grace and power of Jesus Christ, an essential resource for every believer, especially in these challenging times. In these extensive sessions, Bishop McClendon teaches how the Word of God is the new creation's medication, how the power to heal is always present using God's kingdom principles, and how God doesn't punish us with sickness because we did something wrong. The ministry of Jesus is a teaching, preaching, healing ministry. He heals all kinds of disease, and he heals everything, which means no matter what kind they come up with, he heals it. If you desire to walk in divine health, make the Academy of Healing and Wellness your center for disease control, and turn on the flow of God's healing power today. Now available on the Bishop of Clinton Digital Download Store. Become a digital disciple of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Word teaches that great grace comes with the boldness of spreading the gospel. You can find our YouTube channel by simply typing in on your search engine, and there on your screen, the message of grace and truth will be on demand. Will you have the boldness to subscribe and share? Be bold and share the message of the cross with your network. The severity of the times has unleashed a plethora of perplexities worldwide, including the hotly debated issue of racial equality. But in order to deconstruct racism, 
we must first acknowledge that its ideology is based on a historic lie and not biblical truth. Race is not in the mind of God. Race is not distinguished in the Bible. Race is not remotely a Christian concept. So my question is, why does the church continue to engage in the divisive narrative of race? In this unapologetic and confrontational series, Bishop McClendon lays an ax to the root of hatred and bigotry, using biblical evidence to prove God divided men first on the basis of their language and ultimately on the basis of their covenant relationship with him and not their skin color. Order this resource today when you visit our website or call 310-323-2600. Yeah. People say yeah. 
say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. We come for it. Only you deserve it, Jesus. Only you deserve it, Jesus. For your sacrifice, for your life, we cry glory to you, King. Let your glory fill this place. Fill this place. He's in this place. He's in this place. would just lift your hands and say for your glory God for your glory you deserve the glory you deserve the honor God we your people we freely give it to you we freely give it to you we freely give it to you God in this room with your name on it there are breakthroughs in this room healing in this room provision in this room answers in this room it's here for all Who will receive it? We 
reverence you, King. We reverence you, King. Above our needs, God, above whatever we want, God, we reverence you. We lay aside our needs. We lay aside our wants. We lay aside even the vision that you've given us for our lives. And we just love on you. We just love on you, King of Kings. We love on you, Lord of Lords, because you're worthy of our love. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our worship. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy. You are worth our love. You're worth it. You're worth our best praise. You're worth it, God. You're worth it. You are worth it, God. You are worth it. You are worth it, God. of grace where whoever can be healed of whatever this is your church we are your church we are your temple oh holy spirit have your way And the King of Glory fills this place. I said the King of Glory Hallelujah. fills this place. Hallelujah. He's the King. And King, we reverence you as such. Your posture changes, your attitude changes when you go before the King, when you recognize that he is the King of Kings and that he is the Lord of Lords. You don't give him a half praise because he gave his all, he gave his best. So we give our all, we give our best to you. That is the least we can do.
While she was singing that, I heard this. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you is my desire. Sing it if you know it. Just to be close to you. Come on. Just to be close to you. Mm. Just to be close to you. It's my desire. It's my desire. Come on, sing it, sing. Just to be close to you. 
just to be close to you just to be close to you is my desire just to be close just to be close to you just to be close to you Jesus just to be close to you just to be close just to be close to you. It's my desire. It's my desire. There's no place that I'd rather be than in your arms, Jesus. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Daily communing with you, God. Just to be close to you. It's my desire. It's really your desire. You put it in me just to be close. You created me to be close to you, Jesus. You created me in your image and your likeness. Being with you, that's my desire. Just to be close. Just to be close. It's my desire. Now come on and sing to him. Come on, worship.
never separated from him. Never separated from him. Matter of fact, as the prophet taught us about some photos, we were with Jesus through the whole process. Part of that process is him being, he ascended and he's seated. The word says that we are seated in him. Heavenly places. We're never separated. Never separated. Never alone. I think I need to say it. I said you're never alone. You're never alone. You are never alone. If no one calls you or texts you, you're not alone. That's just more time to spend with your head up. Hallelujah. That's less distractions in your life. You're not alone. Hallelujah. 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 You're not alone. He's with you. He sent the comforter. It's Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm not going to preach because I can't. That's not my gift. <laughs> I'm going to just sing. Amen. Some of y'all said you barely can do that. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Song four. That's it. A strong tower. He's a strong tower. One more time, he is a strong tower. He's a strong tower. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Fear no evil. For the Lord. My rod and my step. For the Lord is the my strong tower. The strong tower. Hey, the right is running and we are strong. Strong tower. He's strong. He's strong. He's strong. He's strong. Hey, hallelujah. He's strong. He's a strong tower. Hey, he's a mighty force. Mighty. He's a mighty force. He's a mighty force. He's a mighty fortress. He's a mighty fortress. He's a mighty fortress. He is a mighty fortress. He is a solid rock. He's a solid rock. Hey, he is a solid rock. Solid rock. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Solid. The word says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Come on, let's sing it. 
Everybody say goodness. Say goodness and mercy. And mercy. Goodness and mercy. Hey. Me all of my days. Sing it again. Say goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. And mercy. Shall follow me. Goodness. Goodness and mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you here are watching online? That's your heart's desire to, to dwell in the house of the Lord, to dwell in the presence of God. Amen. That's why we came today. You may be seated this morning here in the tabernacle. And as you take your seat, those of you viewing live stream, wherever you're viewing us from, wherever you're watching us from, welcome to the worship experience this morning here at the place of grace. Let's clap our hands and thank God for the place of grace that is not a a geographic can be healed of whatever so God bless you this morning God bless you in the tabernacle on behalf of our bishop and prophet Bishop Clarence McClendon the entire place of grace family and community we want to welcome you to the worship experience this morning it's a little cool in LA you know they say any I saw something online that said well, you know it's cold in LA it's, it's colder than anywhere else on the face of the planet you know when we got to put on a sweater it's it, you know we're freezing out here so if you got to warm some coffee up if you got to get some get your cappuccino machine your whatever you got to do just to stay comfortable just make sure you don't log off because there is a word that is coming for you today from the presence of God from the mouth of the prophet of God and the spirit of God is going to minister to you in unique distinct and wonderful marvelous way so we're excited about what God has purposed and plan for us today we want to say a special god bless you to all of our prophetic community partners can we clap our hands and thank god for no come on can you do that a little better let's thank god for the pec the pec is made up of men and women who have signed up to level up with the prophet and it's a, it's a special group there are men and women a part of the pec that we may never meet here on this side of uh, uh, of the e eternity line we may never see their face in the natural but we are connected in spirit and your prayers your faith your believing your connection and your partnering with this apostolic and with this prophetic group is making a difference it's making a difference here and we believe god and we know it to be true that it's making a difference in your home in your city in your nation in your family in your immediate area of responsibility so we never want to just uh, uh, blow past the pec like it's just something to repeat on a list but we always want to take time and thank god for the, that prophetic community there is a prophetic people in the earth there's a prophetic community in the earth with all the 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 heck 
that's going on in the world all the hell that tries to come against the people of God against the church of God against societies and communities there is a prophetic community that God is raising up weekly and monthly to be the sounding voice to be the ear and to be the mouthpiece of the Spirit of God wherever they're set so that's the PEC and if you are watching and you're viewing and you say you know what I follow the prophet I live stream with Bishop McClendon but I want to be more connected I believe that the Spirit of God is drawing me to connect in a deeper way than the PEC is for you and guess what it is free there is no charge there is no fee all we need you to do is sign up right there at bishopmcclendon.com fill out the information and you will be immediately enrolled into a global database of prophetic believers and what happens is that the prophet actually takes time he doesn't just say it he does it he takes time out of his schedule to make sure that he is getting to the PEC faith building letters prophetic insights prayer uh, prompts and, and and prayer directives what to pray because it's not just enough to hear the prophetic word of God come on somebody how many of you know it's not just enough to just say hey I heard a word from God today and shout and dance and and and, and, and feel good in the Holy Ghost no but there's some homework you got to do you got to speak the word for yourself to yourself to your situation to your circumstance to your body to your finances to whatever is trying to come against you and so when you have the word of the Lord when you have the prophetic word of God in your mouth you can speak it you can strike the mantle of your circumstance and see the power of God work for you and that's what the PEC is all about and Bishop McClendon gets that information he gets that exclusive packaged revelation to that community so with all other communities that we have in uh, society today make room for the prophetic community and watch out because there is a community that's being raised up to take over so don't miss out sign up join the PEC today it will continue to bless you and as you're signing up on uh, on bishopmcclendon.com make sure you're following the prophet on Facebook on Twitter on Instagram on YouTube if he's on snapchat we'll let you know he's not snapping yet but we will let you know and I, I don't I don't think we're gonna get doc on TikTok. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. So, but he's on YouTube. And if you go to YouTube, you can subscribe and click subscribe on the YouTube page. All the content, there's uh, worship experiences, there's prophetic encounters, there's uh, ministry. It will continue to bless you. You just keep it on loop and you will be filled to overflowing with the goodness of God, with the power of God, with the presence of God. And click, click subscribe once you log on to the YouTube channel and also those of you who have smartphones and smart devices make sure you download the Bishop McClendon app yeah the prophet has its app wherever you get your applications from it's a free app it's a greater way a more efficient way to stay connected to the ministry this is a global worldwide ministry there was always something going on at Clarence McClendon Ministries because the reach extends to the four corners of the earth so to better minister to you in a more effective efficient way make sure you download the app and click the notifications on so you're staying tuned and connected to what God is doing here and what he's doing abroad we are excited for the holiday season can we clap our hand and hands and thank God for you know people that they don't want to say Merry Christmas that's fine because it's the hot they say happy holidays they say yeah these are the holidays these are the holy days these days are holy and we thank God for them and one of the times of the year that we get excited about is our Thanksgiving time why because that means it's time for our Thanksgiving outreach come on we're excited about that I need you to put your hands together I'll even I'll even clap for that because we're excited about being a blessing because uh, every Friday at this ministry, many of you know that we uh, do outreach, we do a food outreach, we feed, we uh, put good food together. There's some good stuff that's going in somebody's kitchen that gets boxed, that gets packaged every Friday here from the place of grace. We feed people, we feed the community, those in need, it don't matter who you are, it doesn't matter your background, anything. If you drive up, you will get provisions, you're gonna get food, but that is it doesn't just stop there every year since we've been doing this the prophet has been directed by the Spirit of God to make sure that we do our CEMM place of grace Thanksgiving outreach so that's gonna be Tuesday November 22nd I need you to hear because this is information we're not just excited about but we're gonna partner as well we need our, our all hands on deck everybody who's available we're gonna we're gonna need you so Tuesday November 22nd everybody say Tuesday say it to me Tuesday those of you watching online, 
Tuesday, November 22nd from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. right here at the Place of Grace, right here at the Tabernacle is our Thanksgiving outreach. And we need volunteers. We need able-bodied men and women who can come. And if you can come for 30 minutes, come for 30 minutes. If you can stay all the way through, stay all the way through. But however long you can stay, come and be a part of it. Come and be a part of packaging food. We need men to help build up and tear down pallets and move boxes. It's going to be busy here. There's going to be cars driving up. Uh, one year, ABC News, ABC World News came out just to see what we were doing. We weren't trying to, you know, flex or anything like that. But because there was a grace on us to do that and to be a blessing to people, ABC World News came out and put us on their broadcast. So this is something that we're excited about. And we want to continue to be a blessing to people. But we need your help, family. We need your help place of grace so if you can come on out we want you to sign up if you're in the tabernacle you can sign up at the uh at the table there in the foyer and ask uh those at the table for information they have all the information that you need if you are local and you need uh information on how you can donate you can call area code 310-323-2600 again that's area code 310 310- 323-2600 and whoever answers that phone let them know hey I'm interested in participating in the CEMM Thanksgiving outreach and we need food items donated there's a list that's at the table for those of you who are here in the tabernacle of certain food items that we need because how many know we want to give we want to be a blessing to somebody we want we don't want you know this isn't the time to clear out your, your, your pantry you know with stuff that's been there since 1995 you know that, that, that's not what this is you know stuff that's from you know the 20th century no 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 no. we're not trying to you know give get rid of food that's been in the basement that's been in canned goods no we want to give good food fresh food so call 310-323-2600 there's a list we want to be a blessing come on now we want to bless we want people to come back you know we feed their 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 natural stomach their spirits will open up and they can hear the word of god so uh items can be dropped off also if you can't uh get here physically but you want to donate something you can drop off items here at the place of grace and again that list is available if you call 310-323-2600 it's also going to be up on the website so stay tuned uh uh stay connected and stay tuned on the website because there's more information that's going to be coming and the prophet is going to give more information specifically to those of you who are viewing online that maybe can't get here you live uh outside of california in another nation stay put because the prophet is going to speak into that as well but make sure you mark it tuesday november 22nd from 10 a.m to 4 p.m again if you got young kids you got children at home that are off school for thanksgiving break and they just sit up on their phones and doing nothing bring them down to the tabernacle put a box in their hand and let them be a blessing to somebody and watch the blessing of god return to their lives amen amen the prophet is on his way shortly into the tabernacle but let's just prepare our hearts this morning for the word of the lord that's coming how many of you are ready to receive what the spirit of god has been ministering to us we're almost at the conclusion of the year we're winding down but this people this this prophetic company this body of believers we're not just ending and trying to you know barely cross the finish line but we're going to run through the finish line already into 2023 with the word of the lord in our mouth and with the spirit of god blowing behind us in momentum so let's open our hearts and thank god today corporately can we do that can we just take a season of prayer before we go back into the worship experience to thank god for the word that's coming so uh, whatever position you want to take but let's pray together father we thank you come on and this is court whenever we pray this is court corporate even though i have the microphone I, I i i need to hear you and i need to figure those of you who are watching at home you can put down your coffee for just a second but don't take one more bite of that cookie but just pray f- with us and watch the power of god go to work in our midst father in jesus name we thank you and we glorify you that you are king of kings and you are lord of lords and you are our father and we are your children and we take our rightful place in the earth as children of the most high god as sons of the living god and we thank you that you are feeding your people today father it is your desire it is your pleasure to give us as your word says to 
give us freely the kingdom of God. So we thank you today that as we receive your word, we receive the engrafted word of God that is able to save our souls, that is able to heal sick bodies, to deliver situ from situations and circumstance, and to completely break us into every purpose, place, and dimension that you have for us. Father, we thank you that whatever is necessary in my brother's life, in my sister's life, those watching and viewing online, whatever prayer, whatever petition that's been on hearts, that's been in the mind, Father, we thank you that answers are coming today. Wisdom, knowledge, revelation, the darkness is leaving, the cloudies, the heaviness. There's a heaviness that's been trying to rest and creep in, in the lives and in the atmosphere of those who have been watching and viewing but in the name of Jesus of Nazareth we speak release we speak the divine release in the Holy Ghost to every household come on to every viewer there's somebody who may not be watching today but they're gonna watch this message months from now even on into next year and we decree that this is their day of breakthrough of liberty of salvation and deliverance in the name of Jesus of Nazareth we declare total victory for everyone Everyone viewing, everyone watching, everyone who connects to this anointing today. We bless you for it. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everyone who agreed said, Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the worship experience. Hallelujah. Man, that's a beautiful song. I wish we could do that. We didn't rehearse that, though. <laughs> we didn't rehearse this either, but I had to call our brother Gaius up. We haven't seen him in a while. He's still a member. He's been busy. You know he's married and he has a child. And since you haven't seen him, they've had another child. So he's doing God's commandment. He's being fruitful and multiplying. <laughs> and we want our brother. His wife is back there, Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. And their two beautiful daughters. He got two daughters. Wow. So we want our brother to come up. He's going to minister this morning. Hallelujah. 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 If you know you're a heavenly person, respond properly. Hallelujah. If you know you belong to the Father, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you know you are a child of God, hallelujah. hallelujah. If you know you are seated with the Father, hallelujah. hallelujah. If you know he lives in you, hallelujah. hallelujah. If you know he won the victory, hallelujah. hallelujah. If you know the victory is yours, hallelujah. hallelujah. If you know you were born again, hallelujah. hallelujah. If you know he's coming soon, hallelujah. hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, you have won the victory. Hallelujah, you have won it all for me. Death could not hold. Sing hallelujah. hallelujah, you have won the victory.
all things are working together because you're alive. Our God is a reason. Yes. He's alive. He won the victory. He reigns on high. Our God is a reason. He is alive. He won the victory. He reigns on high. One more time, our God is reason. Our God is risen. He is alive. He won the victory. Celebrate the reason, King. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He won the victory. He won the victory, so you didn't have to. All we have to do is walk in the victory. All we have to do is walk in the victory. It's just not to say anything other than what God said. We are victorious because of him. And I will call upon the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. So shall I be set from my enemies. The Lord, he liveth and blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Of my salvation, the Lord He liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. He's exalted. Let him be exalted. Let him be exalted. Let him be exalted. Let him be exalted. God, you are exalted. You are exalted, God. Hey! Because victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today. Is mine. Hey, say love is mine. Oh, love is mine. Love today is mine. Yeah, I told Satan, get thee behind, because love today. It is mine. Somebody say peace is mine. Peace of the Lord is mine. Peace today is mine. Oh, I don't say it. Stay right there. I don't say it. I. Don't Satan get thee behind. Peace today 
is mine. Jehovah Shalom. He is our peace. He is our peace. You know that if it's in his name that we have it. We don't have to seek for peace. We don't have to go anywhere to find peace. We have peace. It's all in the name of Jehovah Shalom. We have peace that surpasses all understanding. Hallelujah. Peace. Peace. In the midst of a storm, we have peace. In the time of trouble, peace. In the midst of chaos, peace. 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 Sweet peace. 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 Hallelujah. Hey! And we're trusting in you, Jesus. We are resting in you. And we're trusting in you, Lord. Trusting in you, Lord. We're trusting in you, Lord. We trust in you, Lord. We trust in you, Lord. We lean on your word. We lean on you, God. Hallelujah. We stand on your word. Hallelujah. Oh, tell me who can stand be for us oh when we when we call on that great name come on call his name say Jesus one more time Jesus precious, precious Jesus, Jesus strong we have the already behind and victory today is mine
Oh, what a promise we have. Oh, what a great hope we have. Hallelujah. He's good. To you, honor is due. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and the work that he finished on our behalf. Because of his finished work, your word declares that we are to come boldly to the throne of grace. Why boldly? because there is no fear of rejection the work is finished and therefore you said we should come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need we declare today that your mercies are new every morning and that your grace is sufficient for us thank you for all that shall be said and done in your name today in advance bless your people 
person by person, individual by individual, situation by situation, circumstance by circumstance. You know the need of every one of your sons and daughters. I thank you today that you meet that need. And even more than this, that you perfume them with the spirit of victory once again, that they might know that all is well with the righteous. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. For it is your presence that makes the difference. Thank you for the integrity of your word, my Father. And for the intelligent Holy Spirit who leads us into truth. I thank you in advance that we shall go up from this place bettered for having been in your presence. And to you be the glory and the honor in the name of Jesus and all the sons and daughters of God said it is so. Now say amen. Clap your hands and give praise. Ah, that's a weak praise for a mighty God. You just said he was mighty. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. What's that you playing? What? All of my help. Oh, that's a good one comes from the Lord y'all know that no they don't know it they just they know what it is but they don't know I will look lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my head okay y'all know it the Lord oh you said you didn't know it the Lord who made heaven and he said he will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord that beth thee, he will not slumber nor sleep. For the Lord, for the Lord is thy sheep. I'm missing the way. Who knows it? Who knows it? I... We need to learn it. I remember it. Lionel Peterson sang it in South Africa when I was. Here we go. My help. We know that. My. Everybody knows that part. Oh, my help. My help. All of my help coming from the Lord. Okay, next week we'll learn the words and sing it again. Put your hands together and bless the Lord. The Lord needs to help us with that song. That's what we need. Amen. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God for his goodness and his mercies even over our singing. Praise the Lord. We greet you in the strong name of Jesus and we remind you that he is Lord and there is none other beside him. I want to thank the Lord for all of those of you that continue to pray with us and for us as God continues to advance his purpose. I got the sense over this past week and even more... Um, more significantly in the last 24 hours that there are some things that are being settled in the realm of the spirit um and and i mean by that it's like a you know since nine since 2019 2020 and all the pandemic and all the stuff that happened things have been shifting and changing eras have been changing modalities have been shifting uh, and it has required uh, apostolic and prophetic vision and understanding to understand the things that are going on and to declare them. I sense now there is a settling into the era that is happening and there are some things now that the Spirit of God is going to begin to advance in His church, in the lives of the people uh, as we move forward. So. There's a lot of things that have been 
pending. Do you understand what I mean? So a lot of things that have been pending. There's a lot of things that you and I individually and collectively have set as agendas that we haven't been able to execute yet or to work on yet. And the Spirit of the Lord was alerting me this week that the execution is now on. Many of the things that seem to be pending or, you know, you've had it in your spirit and trying to get it done or knowing it's supposed to get done, but it just, just seems like the atmosphere hasn't been right for it yet. Anybody understand what I'm saying? Uh, the Lord wants you to know that, that there's something is settling now in the heavens and the ground operation is about to advance with greater rapidity. So grab your neighbor's hand and tell them whatever it is, it's about to get done in the earth. Well, yeah, it's, 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 it's soon going to manifest in the earth. So those of you that have been holding on to plans and ideas and concepts and inspirations and it seems it's been a little thwarted or held up the Spirit of the Lord told me to tell you get ready it's on and uh, we shall see some advance in the coming days now that also means that there will be structure and order that will be required in some things so get ready to have some things structured that have sort of been in a free-for-all you see, I, I said this, I said this, I've said this many times that you don't go from one state of order to the next state of order. You generally go from order to chaos and then to order. If you try to establish the next order before things are clear, you will formulate things you have to break up. Do you understand? Because you don't know exactly what the atmosphere of the next thing looks like so oftentimes you go from order to chaos and then to another state of order now the thing is people some people like chaos because in chaos you can do what you want however you want whenever you want and sometimes it'll work sometimes it won't but when another, oh, I'm talking to somebody with that. But when another order starts being established, that means you've got to curtail some of your wants, some of your desires. You may not be able to do everything you were doing in chaos, but you'll get more done in order. I don't know why I'm saying that, but nudge your neighbor and say, pay attention now. These are the things that are upon us in the spirit. And so I say that to you individually, I say it to you collectively. This is the mind of the Spirit, and it's happening right now. I want to encourage you also to pre be prepared, coming back to very practical things. Of course, <clears throat> the holiday season is up on us, and as always, uh, here at Clancy McClendon Ministries and the Place of Grace, we desire during the Thanksgiving season and into the holiday season to be what the Spirit of God has called us to be and to operate in the anointing of philanthropy it's an anointing amen uh you know i shared with you some time ago the bible says that jesus went about doing good acts 10 38 and healing all who were oppressed of the devil and i would always think that that doing good and healing all were the same thing because healing is a good thing but some years ago, the Spirit of the Lord told me, go and study that. And I noticed that when the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all, that those were two separate things. The doing good is actually the Greek word for philanthropy and healing. Are y'all here? Yeah. And, and so, it, and then and the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, he said son, uh, Jesus didn't just have crowds because he was anointed. He had crowds because he was blessing people tangibly. Are you there? See, one thing the body of Christ has to learn is, you see, you don't have to accept my Jesus, but you will not be able to escape his presence in the earth, in the community. You see, you may not like that I'm here, but you're going to know that I'm here. 
because I'm going to be doing good, not just healing. Come on, say amen to that. That's the ministry of Jesus. And so every year we try to do some things, especially around Thanksgiving. And so I want to encourage you uh, of our special time of giving every time before Thanksgiving holiday. We have a special time of giving where we give to the community. Of course, we do it every week, but in, in um, the Thanksgiving and the holiday season, it increases. So we've got about half of the budget already covered and the remaining budget for us to do what we need to do is about 11 thousand dollars and so that's that's most of it's already covered what's remaining is eleven thousand so we've already done most of it and so I want to encourage you if you want to be a part of our giving to sow into it uh, I'm gonna sow the first thousand myself today of that eleven thousand that's remaining and the ministry's already given some but the remaining but so I'm gonna sow the first of the remainder of the budget and uh, if you're watching me live streaming or if you're here and you want to sow directly to our Thanksgiving outreach, I want to encourage you to do so and uh, to let you know all the donations, everything you give goes directly to that outreach. There are no administrative costs in this. So nothing is being eaten up by, you know, administration and nobody's getting paid for it. Everything is already in order in that regard. So all your donations will go directly to our benevolence and so there are ways to just want to let you know you can do it online at bishopmclennan.com or you can cem to 41444 you can give through the bishop mclennan app or you can call but if you want to do it i want to encourage you if you want your seed going to that directly then as you give online there's a drop down menu that will uh that will say thanksgiving donation or something like that um, so designate the Thanksgiving food drive in the drop down menu there'll be something there you can click and it'll say Thanksgiving and you can give to that and then we will make sure that it goes to that wave at me and say to that so I'm doing that s uh, s uh, separate from the special time of giving and if you want to do it you can do it during the special time of giving. You can do it at any time. As I said, I'm going to sow the first thousand of the remaining 11. So there's only 10,000 left. And, you know, if you want to write a check for all 10,000, then bless you and the Lord bless your house. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles very quickly. Do this very quickly. I want you to turn with me in your Bible. I want you to go to the book of uh, Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Six and verse number five. Second Chronicles chapter 26 and verse number five is where the Spirit of the Lord directed me as I was praying for you uh, this past week and more specifically even uh, this morning. And uh, the Lord reminded me of a couple of things and uh, I often say when it comes to the time of, uh, of speaking to you uh, concerning this area that it's my responsibility as a man of God to remind you that it is God's desire and God's will to prosper his people the Bible says the Lord delights in the prosperity of his servant that doesn't just mean preachers did you hear what I just said uh, he delights in the prosperity of those who are favoring his righteous cause those who are expanding the work of his kingdom so it's God's desire for you to prosper for you to have enough and some left over remember prosperity is a relative term the word actually means to do good along the way it doesn't mean that everybody's going to be rich now look at your neighbor and say I may be rich that doesn't mean you have to be rich that doesn't, yeah, yeah. See, see, some of y'all don't like that. Some of you don't like it. But the Bible says God made Abram rich. He's the father of the covenant you're in. It's kind of illegal for your daddy to be rich and you to be broke. In, in, in any government where a father is rich and the children are broke, they call that abuse. Are y'all there? And there are some legal things that are done to straighten that out well here's the good news Jesus did some legal things 
to make sure that daddy isn't rich and the children broke. Y'all aren't hearing what I'm saying. And the covenant that he gave to us, if we will honor it and work it, is the means. Look at what, look at what the scripture says, 2 Chronicles 26 and verse number 5. It's talking about King Uzziah. Uh, well, let me just read it from verse 3. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Amaziah had done. Now look at this. He sought God in the days of Zechariah. Everybody say he sought God. He sought God in the days of Zechariah. Now who is Zechariah? Zechariah is the prophet. So he sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God. So Zechariah was a prophet of God who understood God's word, God's way, God's methodology. Are you still here? He sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him. God made him prosper. Do you see that? Does everybody say God made him prosper? Now see, some of you, you, you say you're Bible believers, but you have problems saying that. Just read your Bible. Look at it. It says, as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. So whether there was drought, God made him prosper. If there was inflation, God made him prosper. If things were lacking in other areas, God made him prosper. Why did God make him prosper? Because he was connected to a prophetic vision and he sought the Lord. Are you there? See, the Bible says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be. Where are my Bible readers? Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be. Believe his prophets, so shall you. Now I've said this many times. The word of God tells you itself. There is no prosperity in believing in God alone. I say that and people get shocked. But there's a whole lot of people who believe in God who are broke. Love God. Have nothing. Some of them believe that's the way God wants it. Not so. There is no holiness in poverty. There is no godliness in lack. Boy, it's quiet in here. It is contradictory to the complete revelation of Scripture. Now, God does not want you and I pursuing wealth. We are to pursue Him. But it is impossible to pursue Him and not have what you need. Now it is possible to be religious and not have what you need. Are you still here? See, so Some of you are looking at me like, there he goes again. I'm going to keep going like this because the word of God commands me to keep going. Are you still here? Look at, look at Proverbs. You see, the Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. That word witnesses doesn't mean two or three people telling you the same thing because two of those people could be wrong. Witnesses there means evidences. Let there be two or three evidences of a thing. So don't believe it just because it's said once. But if you see two or three evidences, then you got to pay attention. Look at Proverbs 10, 22. It says, the blessing of the Lord makes. Remember what, remember what it said? As long as he sought the Lord, God caused him. Would you look at your neighbor and say, God's going to cause me to prosper. No, you're not saying it loud enough. Look at your neighbor and say, whatever the condition, whatever the circumstance, as long as I seek the Lord, God's going to cause me to prosper. Now look at somebody else and say, the blessing of the Lord 
makes rich. Now, what does that mean? If the blessing is operating for you, then provision is coming your way. Now, remember, what is the blessing? Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue, have dominion. And what did God say? He said, see, I have given you every tree that yields seed. The very first part of the blessing is be. Talk to me. The very first statement of the blessing is be. Okay. And fruit is the product of seed sown. So you cannot be fruitful and not be a seed sower. So for the blessing to go into operation, there has to be seed that is released. Are you still here? I said, are you still here? Now, one other scripture. The scripture says, as long as he sought the Lord. Are you still here? God caused him to prosper. Look at Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 31. What does it mean as long as he sought the Lord? Watch this. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? What shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. The word Gentile means one without a covenant. Are you still here? So if you are without a covenant with God, you have to seek things. There's no other way you're going to get them. Once you come into the covenant that God has made with Christ Jesus, that you and I enter into, remember the covenant is not with you. Voice, this is really important. The covenant is not with me. It's with Jesus. Are you there? No, why is it with Jesus? So that it cannot fail. <laughs> so God made the covenant with Jesus instead of Clarence because Jesus will never fail his part. And he put Clarence in Christ Jesus the moment Clarence accepted Jesus. So I am in a covenant that cannot fail. As long as I am not trusting my performance, but Jesus' word and his finished work. Wave at me and say out loud, it is impossible for this to fail. Now watch this. Jesus says, all these things people without a covenant seek. But your heavenly father knows you need all these things. Are you next to somebody you trust? Lean over, squeeze their hand, and tell them the Father knows what you need. Boy, that, boy, that's... I'm, I'm, I'm treading some ground here that I've already cultivated, but I got the sense I'm speaking to some people who need to hear it again. Squeeze your neighbor's hand and tell them the Father already knows what you need. Now, now when, when I read that several years ago, when I read, I mean, this was probably 20 years ago when I read that. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, did you, did you, did you hear what I said to you? I said, well, yes, sir. I already know what you have need of. I said, yeah. And then he said, so stop spending 50% of your prayer time telling me what you need boy it's quiet in the room he, 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 he said you're wasting your time and mine when you spend half your prayer time telling me what you I told you right here I already know what you see most Christians would rather spend their time doing God's part rather than their part See, religion has taught you if you pray enough, God will meet your need. Let me talk to you. No, he will not. 
because prayer is not the seed for prosperity are you there you you can pray 23 hours a day seven six days a week 364 days a year and be broke <laughs> So I need to tell you this because you've been doing it and expecting God to meet your need. No, 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 no. Notice what he says. He says, your father knows you have need of all these things. So if your father knows you have need of all these things, then it's not your job to spend time telling God what you need, reminding him of what you need. Your job is to begin working the covenant he gave you. Are you still here? Now watch this. I'm almost done. But the Lord told me to remind somebody, look at this, for your father already knows what you need. So what should you do? Seek first, seek. As long as he sought the Lord, God, ah. Uh, so seek first the kingdom of God. Now again, what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the government of God and a government functions by principle or by law seek the law of the kingdom that causes things to happen and to come your way don't get another job don't pray nine more hours don't try to fast your way into prosperity put the law into operation are you there what law the law of seed time and harvest Genesis 8 22 as long as the earth remains there will be time to sow a seed and when you sow a seed a harvest will come you don't have to pray about a harvest when you have sown a seed watch this seek first the law of the kingdom what law placed into operation causes the blessing the prosperity to come into your life. Jesus said, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shared together, running over shall men give unto you. Watch it, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness, not yours, his. Seek first the kingdom of God and how he has made you right with him. Seek to stay in right relationship with him. Well, how do I do that? I remain in the finished work of Jesus and I do what the Lord has directed me to do. Now lay your hands upon yourself. <sighs> Philippians says, and my God shall supply. Talk to me. Is, is, this, is this predicated on recession? Is it predicated on inflation? No. And my God shall supply. Talk to me. Talk to me. Look at your neighbor and say, there is not one need of yours that will go unmet in inflation, in recession. Not one need of yours will go unmet. Now, some of you can't say amen to that. And you know why? Because you won't put the law into operation. You don't believe it. And don't worry, it'll never work for you. As long as you don't believe it, don't worry, it will never work for you. But for those of us who work it, it's working. There are people on either side of you that are increasing right now. There are people on either side of you that are experiencing no lack right now. You say, Bishop McKinnon, how can you say such a thing? Because I've been one of them on both sides of that line. I had somebody come to me here recently and say, Bishop McClendon, well, what do you do with that scripture that says the poor you have with you always? I look at him and I said, here's what I do with it. I know it doesn't mean it always has to be me. That's what I know. That's what I do with it. Jesus said, 
that the spirit of the Lord was upon him to preach the gospel to the poor. What is the gospel to the poor? Hang on. The law to make a way somehow. Is that the gospel? No, 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 no. The gospel to the poor is the good news is you don't have to stay that way. The gospel to the poor is I have news that will help you out of that situation. Are you there? Now watch it, watch it, watch it. I'm, I'm done. He said, and my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in talk to me remember glory is not a place the word glory there are y'all here the word glory there means according to his ability to manifest the names of God you say where do you get that definition of glory from your Bible in Exodus 33, I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm taking much too long with this. But somebody needs this. <sighs> Put up Exodus 33. This is not in my notes. Put up Exodus 33, uh, verse 18, 18. Put up Exodus 33, uh, around verse 18, 19, 20. Uh, yeah, there it is. 18 and he said please Moses please show me your glory then he that is God said I will make all my goodness pass before you and I will proclaim the name of the Lord everybody say the name of the Lord say it again the name of the Lord I will make all my goodness pass before you and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you I will be gracious to him, I will be gracious, and I will have compassion upon whom I will have compassion. Watch this. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, watch this. Here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock, so it shall be while my glory passes by. So what did God just say? He said, here's what I'm going to do. You ask to see my glory. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cause all my goodness to pass before you. And watch this. While my goodness is passing before you, I'm going to proclaim my name. And then he says, and it shall be as my glory passes by. So you just got a definition of glory. God just gave you a definition of glory. Not theologians, not preachers, not reverend. God just gave you a definition of what his glory is. Here is God's glory. It is when his goodness materializes in connection with his name. That's why knowing the names of the Lord is important. One of his names is Jehovah Jireh the Lord your so what God actually did for Moses is he caused his goodness to pass before him and he said that's Rapha that's Jireh that's Sitkanu that's Shalom y'all aren't hearing me y'all aren't hearing me uh, uh. that's Tesur that's Rohi these are all names for God. Righteousness, peace, healer. Are you still here? So watch this. And my God shall supply all of your need according to the many ways he has to manifest his goodness and his name to you. He said, my God is going to show up for you and manifest his name. And he has ways to do it that you haven't even thought of. Lay your hands up on yourself. <laughs> so one of the ways that God will manifest his name is he'll cancel debt on your behalf. 
somebody under the sound of my voice is going to get a call in the next seven days that a debt you've been struggling to pay is paid off somebody shout glory that's glory <laughs> lay your hands on yourself God can cause somebody to come to you and write you a check for the thing you've been staying up at nights trying to get handled somebody under the sound of my voice is going to get a check that's going to settle an issue somebody shout glory that's glory God can call somebody to give you a car you don't have to buy it he can call somebody to give you one see he said men will give I don't know who I'm talking to somebody said that's glory God can cause your face to show up in somebody's dream. God, I got more to do than this, but somebody needs this. Lay your hand up on yourself. God can cause somebody when they see you just to decide you know what I just there's something about you that just makes me want to be good to you so you're looking at me crazy I've had it happen to me you say you just bragging no 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 I'm testifying that this stuff we do and preach works Now, I need, I need to pray because I need to get out of this while I can. Because if I stay here, we'll be here all day. Lay your hands up on yourself and tell yourself this. There are ways. No, talk strongly. Say, there are ways that I have not thought about that God has of settling this issue there are ways that I could not come up with in a month of thinking and prayer that God already has to settle this matter to pay this off to get me ahead in this circumstance Lord I trust your riches in glory I trust the many ways you have of handling this however you do it is okay with me but now lift up your hands and say but I count it done as I worship you as I seek you as I put your laws of the kingdom into operation I count it done now I need you to lift up both hands because somebody under the sound of my voice is going to have a testimony in the next seven days to what you just received something is going to be settled for you in the next seven days now if you're a believer and you believe God can do it I want you just to lift your voice and thank him right now thank him thank him in advance Thank him in advance. See, the Bible says Uzziah trusted Zechariah who had understanding of the visions and the word of God. I just declared to you something supernatural is going to happen. It's time to worship God. It's time to worship God in our giving. If you're a tither, if you're a sower, then now is the time for you to put the law of the kingdom into operation right there on your computer screen right there on your smartphone there's a way for you to sow if you're watching me live streaming if the word of god just came to you i want you to act upon the word of god that's what faith is it's acting up on the word of god so right now right there if you're a tither you know what to do if you're sowing in the prophet seed if you're sowing in the first fruit 
maybe God has already blessed you, increased you. If you want to sow into our Thanksgiving, do it. Right there on your computer screen, your smartphone. Softly, guys, there's a donate button. Click it and sow, or you can text CEMM to 41444. Just follow the prompts and give as God has blessed you, as God is prospering and prompting you to do. There's a number on your screen, 310-323-2600. I want you to call the number on the screen. I've got trained prayer ministers ready to agree with you in prayer. The same anointing that's on my life is on theirs. And they're not in some faraway place. They're right here. I walk by them every time I come in to minister to you. And they are anointed. 310-323-2600. Now whether you're giving anything or not, if you need prayer, you call that number. We're going to agree with you. And something supernatural is going to happen. But I dare you to sow a seed. When you mix your faith and your giving, Acts 10 teaches us this. Supernatural things go into operation. 310-323-2600. If you've got the Bishop of Clinton app, you can give that way. But however you do it, do it with joy and do it with expectation on the basis of God's Word. If you're here in the tabernacle and you're giving, if you're making out a check, make it payable to CEMM, Clarence E. McClendon Ministries. If you're giving cash, Please use the envelope. If you want to do it on a bank or credit card, there are people in the aisle ready to assist you. But however you do it, make sure you do it with joy and with expectation. I want to pray with you now over whatever it is that you need. I am anointed of God to agree with you and to help release the power of God into your life. It's a part of my assignment. So here's what I want you to do. If you've already given, if you're getting ready to give, if you haven't given yet, I want you to lift your hands before the Lord and I want to pray for you and then I want you to say some words after me because again, it's not just what I say, it's what you agree with. Did you hear what I just said? The scripture says, if any two of you shall agree as touching anything they ask, come on, lift your hands, say, Lord, I am a sower. I am a child of the kingdom and I declare the kingdom of God and the blessing is operating on my behalf. I boldly confess as I release my seed, supernatural ability is being released. I declare no need in my life is unmet and I boldly confess in favor in finance in things being added to me I am increasing more and more in the name of Jesus amen somebody clap your hands and give God a praise oh. glory to God
Come on, lift your hands and sing. From your rest. And be blessed. By our the Holy Spirit is see when you're dealing with real men and women of God who prepare themselves to minister there is a sensitivity in the spirit that occurs you will see it in the ministry of Jesus I'm about to say something and I do not mean it's not to expose anyone it's to teach you something there are many times when Jesus would be speaking and saying things and he would perceive the thoughts of people he would know by what he was saying there were certain people and persons that were having a problem with what he was saying and they were being agitated by what he was saying and many times when you're ministering under an anointing you know that what you're saying is for the very people who are being agitated And if they can overcome their emotions, the word of God that is coming after whatever offended them will minister to them and bless them. There are a couple people sitting right over there. A male and a female, they were sitting right there. And while I was ministering the word on giving, the Spirit of the Lord let me know it was for them. And when I got done, they got up and left because they were offended by the word of God. Now, I know it by the Spirit. I'm not trying to embarrass them. But what is getting ready to be said was going to be their deliverance. I know it as surely as I am standing here. 
when God sends you to a place to get a word, don't you let anything offend you from getting out of there until it's done. I'll never forget when the Holy Spirit showed me when I was reading the scripture that if Judas had remained and heard what Jesus said after he left, he might not have hung himself. It was ordained for him that he was going to do it. It was prophesied that he was going to do it. But it's, be, it's because many times the word you miss is the one that hangs you. Many times the word you miss is the one that hangs you. Judas and Peter were both sitting in the same environment. Judas would betray Jesus, Peter would deny Jesus. One of them left, the other remained. At the time of supper, the one who left hung himself. He betrayed Jesus, Peter denied Jesus. Which one is worse? They're both sin. But one hangs himself. And one is preaching 50 days later. The word of God that you hear is what determines whether 50 days from now you're laying somewhere or standing somewhere. He that has ears to hear let him hear. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I shall begin the reading of the word of God at verse number 1. We're serious about what we're here. This is not playtime. This, this, this is not religion that we're dealing with here. We're dealing with life and the word of God. Stay with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 1. Thank God for the musicians and for the singers. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse number 1. Now, I need to hurry because the Spirit of the Lord checked me last week, although we had a magnificent time in the Word. The Lord said to me, you did not get as far as you needed to get. So my, I, I allowed my preaching passion to... Uh, take over my uh, teaching acumen. I will try not to do that today. I, I have to get to a, a few things because as I said last week, and the Spirit of the Lord impressed it upon me again uh, this week, that what we are dealing with now, I believe it, it is some of the most, it is, it is primary on the agenda of the Holy Spirit that the body of Christ uh, understands and perceives in this hour, and I do not say that to give myself some special aggrandizement. I just have perceived the weight of this in the spirit and the significance with which the spirit of the Lord wants us to understand it. Now, because it is an ongoing revelatory truth, I have to read into it again, but I'm not gonna stop where I stopped last time. Somebody's laughing. I will pray for me. I, I, I'm not going to get stuck where I got stuck last time, but I'm going to get to some things here that are vitally important. I'll, I'll make a couple of points of some things we established. And to all my intercessors uh, who pray for me, start now. First, first Corinthians 15, verse 1. Now, we, we've been talking about, we're, we're talking about the enablement of grace, that the title of the series is The Empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We'll make that connection. But specifically, right now, we're dealing with the enablement of grace. And I'm going to read this again. Moreover, brethren, verse number one, I declare to you the gospel, Paul is writing, which I preach to you, which also you received and, which, and in which you stand, by which also you are saved if, 
you hold fast that word which I preach to you unless you believed in vain. Now once again, he is talking to people that he has preached to so he knows what they've heard. And when he says, by which you are saved if, he's referring to the totality of their salvation, not just the born again or the born from above experience, but the salvation of the soul and the body, which is a part of the ultimate package of what Jesus died for. That, and, and the emphasis there is that salvation is not something that just happens to you and you're born again. It is something that you are to be continually experiencing in your experiential life, both spiritually and naturally. You are to be saved from things that are happening in the earth by the word of God. Wave at me if you understand what I'm saying. Verse number three, for I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Verse number five, and he was seen. Everybody say, he was seen. seen. And one of the things we said, that the gospel is not just that Jesus died for our sins. He did that. It's not just that he was buried. Uh, he, th- that happened. It's that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures that also happened things happen but the gospel is not complete without the fact he came after his resurrection and so Paul emphasizes this reality of seeing after his resurrection that is the part of the gospel that has been fully preached by the modern day church we have been preached that Christ died, that he, that, that he was buried, that he rose. But Paul says that is not it. If you do not see him after his resurrection, uh, there are things you are not experiencing as relates to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you still here? And by that seeing, he, he, he clarifies what that seeing is. Look at verse 5. And he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen. Everybody say seen. seen. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, to whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen. Everybody say seen. Seen, seen by James, then by all the apostles. Verse 8, then last of all, he was seen by me also as one born out of new time. Now, there when Paul talks about being, he was seen, he expands and helps us to understand what he means by the fact that Jesus was seen. And I said this, that if you do not see Jesus after his resurrection, I'm not sure you're born again. Because it is the finished work of Jesus that communicates and finishes the work that brings you in to the fullness of the born from above experience. And here, when he says, and last of all, he was seen by me, he qualifies and clarifies what this seeing is. Because Paul never saw Jesus in the flesh. He saw him by revelation on the road to Damascus. So we're talking now not just about a physical appearing. Paul sees the Lord by revelation. So it is the revelation of the finished work and of the resurrected Jesus that he is speaking of. Are you still here? I said, are you still here? For I am the least of the apostles who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace, everybody say by the grace, grace. say it again, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Now notice he says, for I am the least of the apostles. So he knows that he is an apostle. Are you still here? Yet he was not one of the original 12. And he never saw the Lord Jesus in the flesh. Jesus appears to Paul on the road to Damascus. It is recorded in Acts chapter 9. And when Paul gives an account of it to Agrippa, he says, I heard a voice but saw no man. So his seeing was not with natural eyes. It was with the eyes of the Spirit by revelation. And may I clarify further that his seeing Jesus was by the word of of the Lord, not by natural vision. He, he said he heard a voice, word, but saw no man. And the word caused him to see Jesus. No, you're not hearing what I just said. The word is what caused him 
to see Jesus. Lay your hands on yourself and say, it will do the same for me. Come on, say it again. It will do the same for me. Isn't that good news? He says, he says, well, I'm the least of the apostles. Watch this. Who am not worthy to be called an apostle. And so now get this, because in Paul's letters, he, he will say many times when he write, Paul, an apostle. <laughs> well, let me, let me, let me. Yeah, see, I'm stuck already, but I need to show you. Uh, uh, I got to. I, I, I need to show this to you because it will clarify something, a point that needs to be made. Uh, I hadn't thought about this till just now, but now I'm thinking about it. Uh, so I want to show it to you. I'm, I'm thinking in King James. <laughs> uh, Someone, uh, which letter is it of Paul's where he writes, Paul an apostle, not of men or by the will of men? Which, which letter is that? Somebody find it for me. First Corinthians 15, I'm still here. He says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. So he says, for I am the least of the apostles who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Get it. I am the least of the apostles, and I'm not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. So he is basically saying, did you find it? Yes, Galatians 1.1. 1, 1. Put it up, please, on the screen. Galatians 1.1. 1, 1. And I'm coming right back here to 1 Corinthians 15.1. But this is vital to where I've got to take you by the Spirit and by the Word of God. Paul, an apostle, not from men, nor through man, through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Notice how he qualifies, who raised him from the dead. So he, I'm an apostle. Now why is this? Because his apostleship was question. Because the people he was writing to knew he was not the original 12. Are you there? But he calls himself an apostle. Watch this. Even though, even though the people around him could say, you never met Jesus. And Jesus never called you an apostle while he was on earth. But that doesn't mean Jesus never called him an apostle. Are you still here? Go to Ephesians 3, 1 through 3. This is also not in my notes, but now i got to do this. Ephesians 3, 1 through 3. For this is called the prison of Christ Jesus for you Gentiles. You have heard of the dispensation of the grace or the grace of God that was dispensed to me. Here's what he's saying. I had grace dispensed to me. Watch this. If indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you, how that revelation he made known in other words, I got what I got not by intention but by revelation. I did not get it when Jesus was walking on the earth. I got it by revelation of the Spirit of God. And in the revelation of Jesus Christ to me, Paul is saying, he called me an apostle and let me know I was one. So I'm, when I write to the Galatians, I say I'm an apostle, not by man. But why is that important? Go back to 1 Corinthians 15. Do you see that? Do you see that? Now go back to 1 Corinthians 15. He says, for I am the least of the apostles who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Get it. Because of what I did before, I am not worthy to be called what Jesus called me. But by revelation of the Spirit of God, I know that Jesus called me an apostle. Amen. Now, I also know that I'm not worthy to be called in the flesh what Jesus called me. But he called me. 
an apostle. So even though I'm not worthy in my natural self to be called an apostle, and I know that, Paul says, I'm going to call myself an apostle in your presence because he called me one. Now, you, did you get that? Now, why is that important? It's important because he goes on to say next, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Are you still here? And his grace, somebody say his grace. His grace toward me was not in vain. Now we understand what it means to receive the grace of God. It means that you will call yourself what you know you are not worthy to call yourself in the flesh, but you call yourself in any way because you know he has called you in. Now watch. Watch what happens. He said, I started calling myself what God called me. Even though I knew in myself I was not in myself worthy to be what he called me. But I started doing it anyway. Now watch what happens. He says, and I am what I am by the grace of God. And his grace toward me was not in vain. I'm, I'm almost to it. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Now he's talking about the rest of the apostles. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I but the grace, oh my God. The grace of God, which was with me. Paul just told us that the grace of God that was given to him did the work. He said the grace labored. He said, I labored. Oh, wait, it wasn't me. It was the grace that was given to me. Are you still here? Yes. Now, the Spirit of the Lord said this to me as I was meditating on this and as he was assigning me to begin to share this. He said the grace of God is not only to be relieving us from a performance-based religion. There's been much teaching and preaching about grace and much of it is good. But he said it's not just to be relieving you from a performance-based religion and releasing you into the liberty of the sons of God. It is also to be empowering you, meaning enabling you with supernatural ability and abilities. The emphasis of, on the grace of God that the Spirit of God has been sending to the body of Christ through men and women in this era is not just to relieve us from a performance-based religion. That's a part of it. But it is also to begin to empower us, please hear this, with supernatural ability and abilities. And the Holy Spirit qualified this to me. He said, he said now by supernatural, he said, son, I do not just mean church supernatural. To do the miraculous, to heal the sick, to cast out devils, that is a part of it. But he said, the supernatural I'm talking about is the supernatural to do the natural better, more consistently, and beyond the norm. Yeah. To do the natural better than people who do not have this grace. Yeah. To outdo the doers. Are you still here? Paul says, the grace labored. Now, the question is, what grace is this to which he is referring? And how did this grace get there? Let's qualify the term 
before we go further. The word grace, the Greek word there is charis, C-H-A-R-I-S, from which we get the English word charisma, charismata, the gifts of the Spirit, the manifestation of the Spirit, are called the charismata or the gratuitous endowments of God. This word grace, everybody say grace. grace. Say it again. Grace. One more time. <coughs> it has been often transliterated as unmerited favor. I don't like that term, unmerited. Um, I, I prefer undeserved. And the reason I prefer, and again, I'm not going to argue with people about it, but the reason I prefer undeserved is because unmerited means there is nothing to be done all right. All right. All right. All right. in order to receive it. Undeserved means that no matter what you do, you receive better than what you did to get it. In, in a, do you see the distinction? See, uh, unmerited means that there's nothing to be done. And so if, if, if we begin to, to preach and teach grace as unmerited, it means there's nothing you need to do in order to receive this. But according to the scriptures, this power is given to them who believed, to those who received him. So there is something that must be done. It must be received. Wave at me if you understand what I'm saying. So, so it's not unmerited because there is a response I must make in order for this grace to be working. Amen. Are you there? Yes. But here is why it is undeserved. The response that I make doesn't qualify for the goodness that I get. The goodness that I get it's much more than the response that I made. I shouldn't get all this for doing what I did. Yeah. Wave at me if you understand what I... In other words, I shouldn't be receiving all of this just because I said yes. Right. Yeah. I shouldn't be receiving all of this just because I said what God said about me. Okay. So, charis, grace undeserved favor but this word also means watch this enabling power or enabling ability an ability that enables you to do what you were unable to do without that ability one of the translations transliterations also is divine influence on the heart and its reflection in the life. Uh, when I was meditating on this, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, son, that this application of the grace of God is, is when my influence upon your heart, he said, it bends you in a certain direction. Uh, the, the, the grace, my, my, my influence on your heart causes you to think a certain way, causes you to function a certain way, causes you to see and act in a certain way in line with my purpose and my will. It is pressure, if you will, divine pressure on the heart, an influence on the heart that causes it to lean in a certain direction. He said, he said, this is what I mean when I talk about my grace being given. He says, uh, you know, the, 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 five man, the five gifts that Christ gave to me, and then he gave some to me. Also. He, said, he said, and grace was given to us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And he gave some to be apostles, some prophets. In other words, the grace that is given to an apostle causes that apostle's heart to lean in a certain direction. Yeah. He, he thinks this way. He sees this way. He or she speaks this way. Now it's the same Holy Ghost, but when that same Holy Ghost is placed on a prophet, it causes them to lean in another direction. Are you there? 
and they think this way. They, and the same anointing can come on an evangelist and it causes them to lean in another direction. Wave at me if you understand. So grace is given and that grace, thank you Holy Ghost, that grace is what causes you to lean in the direction that you lean. Wave at me if you understand. So the grace of God is poured out on the body of Christ, on the people of God. And when that grace is given to you, you lead in the direction of your purpose. You lead in the direction of your assignment. You lead in the, oh God, you lead in the direction of what you've been purposed to do. And it becomes easier because the influence is doing the work. Wave at me if you understand. See, some of you are graced to write. Others graced to sing. Some are graced to be in business. Some are graced to be in entertainment. Some are graced to be in finance. And what God is saying is, when I influence your heart, I am giving you an ability to do more than the educated in that area. Wave at me if you understand what I'm saying. Lay your hand on your brother, your sister, and tell them your grace is going to work for you in this season. It's actually going to labor for you. You're not listening to what I'm telling you. It is going to keep you awake with answers, not with problems. It is going to keep you awake with solutions. It's going to wake you up with vision and insight and ability to go where others can't go and see what others can't see and do what others can't do. Hallelujah! I said hallelujah! Look at your neighbor and say, I'm bent in this direction. Success in the kingdom of God is moving in the direction that you are bent. Say it again, God. That's right. Karebo rianda la mashte kamande. Success in the kingdom of God is moving in the direction you are bent, being undeterred from the direction you are bent in, allowing God to show you answers and solutions in the direction that you're bent, allowing that grace to work. Hardship difficulty, lack of success, lack of provision is an indication that you are not moving in the direction you have been bent by the grace of God. And many times it takes time for the Spirit of God to position you but once he does, you don't let anybody move you out of that place of grace, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Wait with me if you understand what I'm saying. So Paul says, hey, yeah. Paul says the grace started working. Watch it. When I received that I was who God said I am even though my natural mind disqualified me come on say amen to this when I started receiving that I am who he says I am and then and I started saying I am what he says I am the grace started working <laughs> the, oh you're like the grace started functioning. 
Oh, this is glorious. Ah, uh, now the question again is, how did this grace get there? Uh, and what grace, what is this grace he's referring to more specifically? Let's go down, uh, let's go to John 14, quick. Woo! Man. Goodness. This is going to take a month. Uh, John 14, am I helping anybody yet? Is the word of God helping anybody yet? See, let me, la la borre ma kashtande le vosa ma keshte da bote la masse. Rika so stande le vake sato. Ma ke sonde le masse stande le vaka. See, understand this. Ala borre ma kaste keshta. Understand this. There are places that you are put in the natural world that may not be the direction of your bending. You are there because you got to make some money. You're there because you got to pay the bills, but it's not the direction of your bending. Wave at me if you understand what I'm saying. And so you are set there temporarily. It's not, it's not your assignment. It's not your vocation. And this is why the Bible says God sets the solitary, the individual, in families, in the kingdom of God. Now we're talking about a kingdom operation not a world operation. God says you may be in this position in the world. It's not the position of your bending. That's why I give you an opportunity in my kingdom to get into the kingdom and start doing something in the direction of your bending. You're not hearing me. See, if we ever get out of church, and into the kingdom, you will begin to understand why many of you, you know, we call it volunteer workforce, but, but really, it's a setting. I'm not being clear enough with this. I, I just said it in the spirit, but I haven't clarified it enough. So let me make it more practical for you. You, you are, you are, mm, you are uh, a bank teller in your job. But in your heart, you're a, a singer. In, in your heart, you write music and melodies come to you and things come to you. But you're a bank teller in your world setting. So God puts you in a spiritual family. And he moves upon you to sing in the choir or to be a part of the worship team. Why? Because he wants the grace that he's put in you to begin to function so more grace can come and lead you further in that direction. So you're working at the bank, but you're singing on the worship team. And one of them begins to exhaust you and so the thing you give up is your spiritual setting not your natural one and the grace stops working I'm talking about the kingdom of God now not church and what you didn't understand is God was putting you in a place where that grace could begin to lean on you heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier until you start getting such insight and songs and music and things that you start writing and producing and then your grace overtakes your job. Now you can leave the job because your grace is funding you. Wave at me if you understand what I just said. John 14. Mm. 15. Are you there? Yes. Did you get what I just said? Yes. I said, I can hear it. I can hear it. 
Somebody just said, now Bishop McClendon just, he just, he just said, he said see, let me tell you something. The time to leave your job is when your grace is working so heavily. See, a lot of people, they they leave their jobs because they got a calling. Your calling is not enough for you to leave your job. If your grace is not working, you are going to be in need and blaming God because of a lack of wisdom, not a lack of anointing, not a lack of grace, a lack of wisdom. You did not allow the grace to go to work strong enough and long enough to sustain you. Every one of you, and those of you listening to me, every one of you have something in you beyond whatever you're working at vocationally. No, you're not listening. Every one of you have something in you that is separate and distinct from what you are doing to get a paycheck unless you are in your grace. Completely. God help me preach. And what you don't understand is you are to be allowing that grace to work in your off time, in your non-job vocational time. Let the grace work. Let the grace labor. Yield to it. Don't leave where you're set yet. Let the grace work. And if you let the grace work, the grace will begin to overtake the vocation. And you'll find you're doing so much with the grace that you don't even have time to work at your natural job. Because when you're laboring in your grace, it doesn't feel like work. Why? Because the grace is laboring. People ask me all the time, Bishop, how can you keep doing this? How do you do this all the time? It's the grace. And see, when you're functioning in your grace, it'll keep you strong. It'll keep you healthy. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. There's a lot of people who die sick because they never got into their grace. And they lived frustrated in a job that had nothing to do with their grace. Why are you preaching like this, Bishop McClendon? Because there are tens of thousands of dollars. There are millions of dollars that are to be coming into the hands of the sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. If they will get out of this world system and into their grace. Uh, I'm trying to release people into their grace. Keep them connected to the anointing, but release them into their grace. Keep them functioning in the kingdom, but release them into their grace. See, when you're really... Oh, God, I can't preach this. I can't preach this yet like I want to. No. Because people will think... uh, They'll think... uh, I, this is not where I want to go. It's not where I, uh, it's not where I plan to go. But <laughs> Hallelujah! I said Hallelujah! But see, when you start function, oh God. When you start functioning in your grace, you won't need anybody to pay you 
to do what your grace enables you to do. It's not that you shouldn't be compensated. It's just you won't need it. You'll have so much going on. How does this work? Let's look at John. See, I'm trying to get you out of religion. And into the kingdom of God and let this grace work for you and labor for you. Uh. Verse 15, John 14, if you're there, say, I am. If you love me, keep my commandments, or, or better, my words. Keep the things I, 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 I've said to you. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. Once again, alos parakletos in Greek, which means one besides me, in addition to me, just like me in every detail, but distinct from me. He will give you another, alos, one besides me. I'm one, but my father's going to give you another. Just like me, in every detail, but distinct from me. Now, who's he talking about? He's talking about the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is another, Allah. He is one beside Jesus, in addition to Jesus, but just like Jesus, in every detail, but distinct from Jesus. That's what the word means. I'm not trying to mess up your doctrine. That's what the word means. Jesus, the man, according to scripture, is at the right hand of the Father. Jesus, the man, according to the scripture, must be held in the heavens until the restitution of all things. And then he Physically, this same Jesus, which you saw go, shall return. Not a different one, same one. And there is one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. So there is a man in heaven named Jesus at the right hand of the Father. But he said, when I leave, I will send you, Alos, another just like me, in every detail, but distinct from me. Another helper, parakletos in Greek. Alos parakletos. The word parakletos means helper, comforter, strengthener, advocate, standby, intercessor, counselor. I am one helper, Jesus says, comforter, strengthener, advocate, intercessor, counselor, standby, and I'm going away. And when I go away, I'm going to send you another helper, comforter, Strengthener, advocate, standby, intercessor, counselor. <laughs> Wait a minute. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither knows him, or neither sees him, nor knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you. He's talking to his apostles who have been walking with him. And he just, what he just told them is that this helper, comforter, strengthener, advocate, standby, intercessor, counselor has been with you for the last three and a half years. Ah! But 
Makashandelemaka. But he has not been in you. He has been with you, but will be in you. So he was with them in the person of Jesus. That's why when Philip looks at him and says, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. He says, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> time out, Phil. <laughs> the helper, comforter, strengthener, advocate, standby, intercessor, and counselor has been walking with you every day for three and a half years. The problem is you missed the helper, counselor, strengthener, advocate, standby, comforter, intercessor. You missed him because you were looking at me in the flesh. And you didn't realize that everything I was doing was the helper, strengthener, advocate, Standby, counselor, it is working through me. Now, what's about to happen when I leave and pay the price? He is going to be in you. He's been with you. But he's going to be in you. I, look, look, I will not leave you. I will come to you. So when this helper, strengthener, advocate, counselor, standby comes to you, I've come to you. Are you still here? Yes. Now watch, 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 watch. Because this is not separated by verses and subjects when Jesus said it. It's one uninterrupted statement. Look at verse 19. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. See, this is how you see him after the resurrection. But you, the world won't see me. You will see me. The time out. So the world will actually think that you are doing what you know I am doing. <laughs> no, no, you missed it. You missed it. They're not going to see me. You are going to see me. And they're going to think you're doing what you know I'm doing. On the inside of you, I'm the one doing it. Because, see, I, I've, come, I've come in you. Now, I'm doing the work. Now, they're going to think you're doing it, but you're going to know it's me. Because they can't see me, but they'll see you. But you'll know it's not you. And you can't take credit for what you know I'm doing. You'll know it's the grace. You'll know it. You'll know. You'll know the grace is doing the work. They will think you are doing the work, but you will know the grace is doing it. That's why I'm telling you, when your light starts shining, let it shine. So people see what you're doing, but don't glorify you. They glorify the one who is doing
let me just get through this. <laughs> and I'm going to stop. A little while longer and the world will not see me, but you will see me. Oh, children, don't miss this. Because I live, you will live also. Now watch this, because this all goes together. At that day, now what day? He just qualified the day. It will be the day, number one, when the world will see me no more, but you will see me. It will be the day when you know I'm alive after the resurrection, and you're alive also. Now, at that day, when the world is not seeing me and you are, and you know I'm alive and my life is in you, in that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. No, oh, please hear this. What does it mean when Jesus says, uh, that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me. Now notice, notice when he says you'll know this. You're going to know this the moment the world isn't seeing me, and you are. Now, this is one of the reasons why a majority of the church still doesn't know this. Because they are not yet living in a dimension where the world doesn't see the Lord working, but they do. Because yeah. most of the church doesn't see the Lord working. <laughs> Through them. Because they're not letting the grace work. I'm out of time, but I got to take the time to get this to you, and then I can pray. He, what he said was, when the world doesn't see me working, but you do, yeah. then you're going to know that I'm in the Father and you're in me. When you see me doing things through you that the world can't understand, that they can't figure out how you're doing it, that's when you'll know. See, and because most of the people of God are not yet doing things in such a dimension that the world has to look at them and know they couldn't do this. See, this is the supernatural we're headed for. The supernatural where the world can't see what's happening and who's doing it, but you see who's doing it. And it's so clear to you that you see who's doing it because you know you couldn't do it. Am I making sense by the Spirit to you? So what he's saying is there's some stuff, thank you Holy Ghost, that's going to begin to happen. That is going to be so powerful, so extreme, so mighty coming through you that the world is going to look at you and think you're doing it and you're going to know I couldn't have done that if I tried. God did that. Now watch this. Because this is what is being said to us. He says when that happens, you're going to know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. Now, what does that mean? He, he, what he's saying is when that starts happening, you're going to know that I, Jesus, have the same status in the creation as my Father has. See, for Jesus to be in the Father means he has the same status as the Father. You're going to know now that, that I have been given 
the same status in the creation as the Father. See, you, after the resurrection, Jesus was elevated. To the same status as the Father in the creation. According to the scripture, he did not have that same status until after the resurrection. Now he was talking about it before the resurrection. But he didn't have it until after the resurrection. And <laughs> Philippians... And because he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. So that didn't happen until after he became obedient to death and was resurrected. Yeah. The Hebrew writer tells us that the Lord said to my Lord, <laughs> that Jehovah said to Yeshua after the resurrection, sit here <laughs> until your enemies are made your footstool. God called him God. Am I, are you getting this? So now watch this. He said, when, when this starts, I, when this starts happening, you're going to know that I have been given the same status in the creation as my father. Oh, watch this. And you have been given the same status with the Father in the new creation that I have. I'm in Him and you're in me. I, I have been given the status of the Father and you have been given my status in the earth. So. Are you, in, are you in the building? Are you in the building? So I have been given the Father's status and you have been given my status in the earth. You, you new creation, you, have Jesus' status in the earth. I'm, 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 I'm almost done. Now, if that is true, Bishop McClendon, why are we not seeing more of this grace working? Well, because we're not doing what Paul said he did to cause the grace to work. We're not calling ourselves what he has called us because of what we did before we received him or because of what we know we are not without him so we won't say it am, 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 I, am, I, am I sweating for no good reason sister Betty am I sweating for no good reason I'm, 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 I'm going to stop are you God bless you Thank you. I'm, I'm almost done. I really am. 
No, watch. Because this is, this is important. He who has, he, he, this is a part of the same thought. He who has my commandments or my words or what I've said and keeps them. It is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest. Oh. Oh. Oh, and manifest myself to them. So back it up, back it up, back it up. Now here's what Jesus just told all of us who are new creations. He just said, although I will be in you, it will be my words kept and acted upon by you that will cause what is in you to manifest outside of you. Know and be aware, Jesus is saying, that you may have me in you and still lack manifestation of me outside of you. Which is where most of the church lives. We have him in us, but very little manifestation of what is in us outside of us. And I'm not just talking about healing the sick and casting out devils and opening blinded eyes. I'm talking about prospering in a recession. I'm talking about staying well and overcoming in a pandemic. I'm talking about exceeding in business when nobody thinks you can. Jesus says, my words spoken by you and acted on by you are what's going to cause what is in you to manifest outside of you. And if you are not keeping what I told you you are and saying what I've told you you are, you are going to have Christ in you but very little evidence of Christ outside of you, in your world, in your atmosphere, in your dimension. And what is happening in the world will be happening to you, even though the grace is supposed to be working for you. Wave at me if you understand what I just said. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Get it? Christ in you is the hope Colossians 1 27 put it up is the hope of glory it's not the assurance of glory it's the hope Christ in you is the hope of glory it doesn't assure you that glory is going to manifest for you. Now, ah, ah. Remember, what is glory? It is the materialization and the manifestation of the goodness of God. God is saying, I put Christ, that anointed one, that anointing, that grace in you so it could manifest. 
and materialize so that any goodness you need could materialize for you where you are I put that helper counselor strengthener intercessor standby advocate in you so wherever you are goodness can manifest materialize whatever my name is could show up in your atmosphere That's the hope. But you got to do something for that to materialize. Hope is the reasonable expectation for good. Because Christ is in me, I have reason to believe something good is going to happen no matter what the situation is. However, I have to keep his word and speak it. Lay your hands upon yourself. And you say, Bishop McClendon, why are you so methodically and systematically and didactically ministering this? Because this is a season where the Spirit of God is looking for people who are going to keep His Word and speak it no matter what. And the grace of God has been given an assignment now on your behalf to work for you. Did you hear what I just said? Lay your hands upon yourself and say the grace is going to work for me. On time, over time, when I'm asleep, the grace will be laboring. Lay your hands upon yourself. Let's say this out loud. I am what I am by the grace of God. His word, according to the scriptures, is the word of his grace. That means that when I speak it, grace goes into operation. It begins to labor to manifest what I am declaring in line with the Word of God. Say it out loud. The grace of God is laboring, working, on my behalf right now I am righteous holy blameless unreprovable in the sight of God I am well prospered overcoming the grace of God is going to work for me. Now let me ask you this. Keep your hands on yourself. What has God told you that you are to do? What has He said to you is supposed to happen for you? What do you know that He said is your assignment, your future, your destiny. What is it that he has shown you you are bent in that direction? You need to begin to write that down and you need to begin to declare it on a daily basis. Did you hear what I just said? The Spirit of God has impressed upon me to say to you that there are some things that are going to happen very rapidly as you take what he has said to you and begin to speak it now and I'm not talking about your idea I'm talking about his word from the scripture his word from revelation that he has given you 
about who you are and what you are to do. Jesus started declaring who he was after the resurrection, before the crucifixion. You know what I just said. He started saying things that pertain to after the resurrection, before the crucifixion. Are you there? He said, no man takes my life. Y'all are here. I lay it down. I have the power to lay it down. Too. And I have the power to pick it up again. Now a dead man doesn't have power to pick up anything. But he knew on the other side of that crucifixion, he was going to be given the power to pick that life up. Are you there? Lay your hands up on yourself and declare, I shall say on this side what I shall have on the other side. I will start saying it today and I shall see it in my life. If you receive it, shout about it now. Do it now. I'm done. i got to stop. Way over time. Come on, lift your hands one time and bless the Lord. yourself I'm, I'm gonna cut this short because I'm over time lay your hands up on yourself word of God. Lift, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Everybody, lift your hands. Lift them. Lift them right now. Lift them. Now say this out loud. Say, Lord, let it be to me according to your word. Keep your hands on yourself. Listen to me. That was a word of exhortation. It was a word of confirmation. It is a manifestation of the Spirit. It is tongues and interpretation. And many times it comes to edify or strengthen or confirm a word that has been declared. Now hear me. Just before that utterance came, I saw in the Spirit, I saw, and, and that's why I know it was a, an exhortation of the spirit I saw in the spirit I saw a chessboard and I saw as if the hand of the Lord picking up pieces moving them and placing them in specific locations and as I was watching it the word of the Lord came to me and he said son I am doing this now tell my people I am doing it now I am putting them in strategic positions, in locations. Please hear me. I am placing people in strategic 
locations where I am going to manifest myself on their behalf. I'm talking about in business locations. I'm talking about in entrepreneurial positions. I'm talking about in companies and vocations. There are people under the sound of my voice that you are being strategically placed. Some of you, it's like a door closed on you and you wondered why the door closed. And God is going to strategically place you in another place where you are going to flourish. There are others of you, you know movement is happening and you're expecting and desiring the Lord to lead you. Hear me. His promise is, my sheep know my voice and the voice of strangers they will not follow. And so what you need to do is begin to declare every day of your life, I am hearing, I am knowing, I am following the voice of the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you, He will not allow you to miss Him in this hour. If you will heed and declare His word, it is too vital that you be placed where He wants you now. It is too important to his kingdom advance that you be exactly where you need to be. Now hear me, because uh, God can't take all his children and place him where he's going to place you. Many of them wouldn't know how to function there. Uh, I got so much of this. I gotta stop. I'm going to say this and I'm not going to back it up with scripture today. I'm going to back it up with scripture next week because I don't have time to take you to every chapter and verse, but I'm going to do it next week. So right now, I just need you to take it. You, you must now Begin to declare yourself a son of God, a daughter of God in the earth. You must now start saying that you are one. That is actually what the new creation is. Every new creation is a son of God. You are not Jesus never called you a Christian. God never called you a Christian. He called you a son of his and because we have called ourselves what the world has called us and not what God has called us we remain what the world makes us and not what God has made us Beloved, now, are we the sons of God? No, please hear this. And it does not yet appear what we shall be.
Now, what does that mean? It means until you accept your sonship, whatever you are supposed to be will not begin to happen. Until you say, first of all, what he has said about you, whatever you are to become from there doesn't go into operation. Why? There's no grace on calling yourself a Christian. It's not a God utterance. It, it, it's not a word from God about you. It, 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 it's not what God said you are. God said you are one with his nature and character. That's what son means. God said you're a son. And God bear me witness in the Holy Ghost. I got to stop. It, it, it was about 10 years ago when I was in prayer. The Spirit of the Lord, he said to me, I want you to start asserting your sonship in prayer with me. I told you to call me father. And if I am your father, what does that make you? I said, well, if you are my father, that makes me your son. He said, say so. And I am telling you, say so. You don't have to tell people you are. If you start saying so, in your private devotional communion with God, the grace will start laboring. It'll start going to work. Beloved, now are we the sons of God and it doesn't yet appear what we shall be because what you are to be will not start manifesting until you take the place of son. Some of you are looking at me like I've lost my mind. <laughs> Pastor Dion, come here, because I got to leave. If I stay, I'll keep talking. I'm going to let him dismiss you. Lay your hands upon yourself. I, I'm, I'm serious. I, I got to go. Come here. Just, just softly, softly. I'm dealing with a, I'm dealing with a very serious kingdom agenda here. And I am responsible before God. The Bible says that the whole earth is groaning and travailing and it is not waiting for Christians to show up. It, it is a waiting the manifestation of the sons of God. The Bible says to those who received him, to them he gave the power to become Christians, to become the sons of God. Poverty is waiting for a son to show up. The pandemic was waiting for sons to show up and Christians kept showing up. The economy is waiting for sons to go into business 
Lay your hands on yourself. I'm not talking just about me. I'm talking about you. You are the son of God. You have been given the nature and the character of God. finished. Lay your hands up on yourself. Come here, Pastor. Now hear me. Whew. When sons who know they are sons start showing up things are going to change immediately in atmospheres and circumstances the whole earth is groaning and travailing waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Lift up your hands. People were willing to tolerate Jesus until he said I am the Son of God. His teaching, His miracles, they didn't like Him, but they would put up with it. But when He said, I am the Son of God, they said, okay, we got to kill Him. Read it. Okay, we got to put Him to death. This is the thing that the enemy does not want the church to step into. But wherever a people will dare to do it, they will begin to see things that other people will never see. I'm telling you to go into business as a son of God. I'm telling you to go into that vocation as a son of God who knows you are a son of God and watch the grace of God go to laboring and working for you, doing things that you cannot do. Lay your hands upon yourself. I want every person who has heard my voice today before this meeting closes, I'm not even going to tell you what to sow. But I am going to tell you in the name of Jesus that a word from God just came to you that will change everything in your life in the next 120 days if you'll put it to work. Now the reason I'm saying that to you is because I know by the Spirit, it's almost as if the Holy Spirit is waiting to unleash Himself on people who will take what the Word of God is showing us now and put it to work. God bear me witness in the Holy Ghost this morning. I was in prayer and I said, God, don't let me just preach this. Don't let me just teach this. I want to live this. 
I want this manifesting in my life. I'm seeing some of it. But I was praying, God, I want to see this. I don't want to just share this with people. I want to be a living example of it. And if you agree with that, if that's you, then I want you just to lift your hands. And I want you to ask the Lord what you should sow in response to this word. Pastor. Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on, put your hands together. Receive the word. Ushers, come, come forward and just begin to hand out those envelopes for you there at home. Like the man of God said, he's not going to tell you what to sow, but believe and trust the word of God that's coming up on you now. Sow that seed. Come on, don't second think it, don't second guess it. Sow what he's put on your heart to sow. This is a great opportunity. It's a grand opportunity. Bring it down a little bit. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt what's been put on my life and what's been given to me. And for me, when I hear a word and God, to be able to share with other people and tell them, help them to see where we are and where we're being positioned now. I can hear a word and see a position coming out of it. And that's what I see now. God is positioning us. Everyone that's heard this word here in the house and all out there. Doesn't matter if you're listening to this on replay or rewind or whatever. If you're hearing it, God is positioning you literally under the cloud. The children of Israel travel by a, pill, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. But every time that cloud moved, they had to be positioned underneath it in order that they might continue to receive from God. If that pillar of fire moved at night, they had to pack up everything and move in position under that pillar. And that's where we are now when you're hearing this word. Position yourself and that seed will allow it to be done as well. But you want to position yourself in your heart to, to receive. We're going to take communion over this word and we're going to receive that word. The word of grace that's coming out. The sons of God that are coming forth. You and me. You ready? You know what? We're going to ushers position yourselves by the doors and you sow that seed as you're leaving put that seed in the receptacle as you're leaving if you're there at home you sow that seed now we're going to receive this word and we're going to commune concerning this word that it manifests in our lives this day Come on, the man of God, he hasn't left the house, but continue. Just because he's left the room, no. It's the word. The word is alive and working in and on our lives. If you need a communion element, raise your hand, lift your hands. If you're still writing, just raise a foot or something. He'll get it to you. Come on. You, everyone in the house should have received one. If you're there at home, as the prophet tells us, look, doesn't matter if you get cornbread and water, we're going to bless it. We're going to lift it up to, and bless it and receive this word that it manifests not just in us, but on us. All around this room, right where you are in the household, 
in your living room or in your kitchen, pause for a moment. Take that bread and lift it. Think on what you heard here today. Meditate on that. See yourself being, is, am a son of the living God. One within the likeness, character, the similitude of him to do here on earth what he does there in heaven. That's you. That's me all over this earth. It's your right. It's what Jesus went to the cross for. It's what he bled and died for. Not just that you would be saved or go to heaven, but that you would come into this full force and the fullness of sonship. Father, we thank you. We lift this up to you. Lord, this, the bread, the body of Christ that was given for us in our place. Given for us that we might live. Lord, we receive this body. Lord, we receive every attribute, every strength, Lord, every victory, Lord, every key, we receive it now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let none of us lack anything. Lord, we position ourselves underneath this word. Let it fall on us and in us. In Jesus' name, let us all lead as one. And on that same night, he took the cup, said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Every drop that he shed, not only did he give it to you, he, he made a covenant concerning it. If you would receive, it's yours to have. It's yours, it's mine, wherever you are. Have it. It's yours to have. Have it. Father, we thank you. Jesus, we receive the cup. Lord, on one accord, we agree with your word concerning all these things. In our lives and on our lives, Lord, that not that people see us, Lord, but they see you through us. In Jesus' name, let us all drink. Hallelujah. Somebody put your hands together. Thank the living God for what he has done. Amen. It's, just, it's not just something to say. It's real. And it's true concerning your life. Amen. Right there where you are. If you didn't get to finish to sow your seed, sow that seed. Again, a seed planted, it'll, it'll sprout up a harvest concerning this thing and this word that's been declared. Stand up all over this room. We're going to release you. Lord, we thank you now for your word. We thank you for the man of God, the prophet that we have in Bishop Clarence McClendon. Lord, we bless him now. Lord, strengthen and replenish him. Let him lack nothing in his life that he has need of. And even as we leave this place, Lord God, we do not leave your presence. But heavenly angels go before us. Bring us back here at the appointed time that we might worship you in your beauty and in your holiness. In Jesus' name, everyone shout amen. 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 Go in peace. The Lord God be with you. Become a digital disciple of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
The Word teaches that great grace comes with the boldness of spreading the gospel. You can find our YouTube channel by simply typing in on your search engine, and there on your screen, the message of grace and truth will be on demand. Will you have the boldness to subscribe and share? Be bold and share the message of the cross with your network.